and uh, good afternoon. Uh, to everyone. I'm Federica and I'm the lead bio creator of Disprot and uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, uh, Disprot. It's going to be an introduction uh, of uh, our resource. So uh, what is Disprot actually? Disprot is uh, a gold standard resource uh, uh, for manually curated annotations of intrinsically disordered proteins and regions uh, from literature. So we cover both structural and functional aspects of uh, intrinsically disordered proteins. Now we will call them IDP or intrinsically disordered regions, IDRs, from um, specific uh, experimental methods uh, and uh, peer-reviewed papers. And uh, uh, this product is uh, a database uh, of, uh, uh, that relies on the work of uh, uh, professional and community biocurators. So we have biocurators that uh, screen the literature, extract uh, and synthesize all the relevant information uh, about IDPs and IDRs and add them to the database. So we do have uh, uh, releases every six months. So you actually in uh, June and December of every year, you can find the new uh, releases uh, of this product uh, available. And uh, uh, as you can see here, this is the homepage of this product. So what you can find uh, from uh, uh, the homepage, uh, you can ex start exploring the database and all its content. So you can uh, perform a search here by typing a protein of interest, let's say, for example, P53, and you can search it. But you also have already some examples of uh, uh, well annotated uh, and well known proteins, uh, for example, P53 and beta catenin, but we also included uh, examples from uh, a very relevant pathogen, which is uh, the SARS CoV 2 virus, and proteins from uh, these uh, virus that have uh, intrinsically disordered regions inside. Moreover, um, exploring the um, this product homepage, you can look at specific organisms. So, for example, you see here Homo sapiens, Mos musculus, and the number. The number is the number of proteins annotated in this product for each specific organism. So, for example, we have more than 900 proteins from Homo sapiens, human proteins. And these are not only uh, the, the only organisms that are uh, annotated in this product, we have several others, but uh, we have been choosing to represent some of the most studied organisms, but you can find many more. And at the same time, we have data sets. What are the data sets in this product that you can see here? Data sets are collection of proteins uh, that are in the, annotated in this product for a specific uh, biological area of relevance for intrinsically disordered proteins. Uh, we started with uh, unicellular toxin and ductic toxins a couple of years ago, but we have several others now, for example, ECM proteins, viral proteins, cancer-related proteins, and autophagy-related proteins. Again, you can see a number on, uh, uh, under each uh, data set that represent the number of proteins included in that, co in that collection. And each data set, uh, the same uh, way for the organism, is growing uh, with each release of the database. Other things that you can uh, find in this proton page uh, is how to cite our resource if you use it. So this is uh, the latest uh, publication on nucleic acid research for uh, uh, this product. It has been published in 2022 and you can access it in PubMed, but also you can find uh, the DOI here. And you also see other relevant information like uh, uh, the uh, info about this product. So the version currently is the version 9.2, the release, the number of entries available in the database. But uh, we also have uh, additional uh, um, resources that support what we do in the database. Uh, indeed, we have uh, a blog for uh, uh, these product updates and uh, uh, a dedicated Twitter page. So if you click here, you will be able to explore the blog of this product. For each release, whether it's a thematic release or a, um, a technical release, we try to have a, a dedicated blog post that can describe what we have been doing. For example, if you click here, this was the latest release we have been doing in June for this product, you will find 
uh, information about the two new thematic data sets we have been introducing in this prot uh, two months ago, uh, namely the autophagy related proteins data set and uh, the cancer related proteins data set, also with uh, information about uh, specific use cases. But we also have a um, Twitter page for uh, uh, this prot that uh, you can see here. And uh, uh, we have uh, all the uh, latest uh, announcements, news about uh, our resource. Uh, so for example, our webinars, but also uh, one of the uh, things we have been doing recently is publishing a protocol for users on how to uh, explore manually collected annotations of intrinsically disordered proteins in this. So you can find all the news about the, dat the database, of course, about the releases too, in uh, uh, the uh, Twitter account. So this is what uh, you can see if uh, uh, you um, look at the home page of this plot. But uh, what uh, if you want to uh, look at a specific protein? So let's pick a protein now and look what we can find inside uh, each entry in this plot. Okay, so this is the identifier of uh, um, a specific entry of this plot. And uh, uh, this is the name of the protein. So we are dealing with autophagy-related protein 9. Which uh, type of information you can find in each entry of this prot? So you can find the organism, for example, here, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the sequence length, and the disorder content. What is the disorder content? It's the percentage of uh, the sequence that is disordered over the total number of residue of that protein. So here is 28%, uh, percent, slightly above the 28%, and it's uh, the N-terminal region of the protein. You will be able to find uh, the cross-references to that specific protein in other uh, relevant resources, for example, Uniprot, but you can also find uh, um, the information about uh, ATG9 in uh, MobiDB and in AlphaFold. If you are looking at a protein that uh, is uh, part of a specific data set, it could be part of one uh, or more than one data set, you will find it here. Indeed, this protein is part of the autophagy related proteins data set. And you will be able to see also when it was last uh, updated in the database. So what are you going to, uh, to see here? We have two main uh, parts in each this protein One is the feature viewer, that is this, where you see the um, annotated intrinsically disordered region on, uh, on the viewer. This is the region that has been annotated by our curators and correspond to the end terminal of the protein. But you can also have annotations about the functions. And indeed, we have two functions annotated for um, two very short regions inside the main IDR. As you can see, also, this region was predicted as uh, disordered uh, in, uh, in, alpha, in alpha fold, and you can see, uh, you can see it because it has a, a, a PLDDT lower than uh, 50. Same, it's uh, predicted uh, disordered also the um, C-terminal uh, region, although we didn't find uh, information in the literature, not yet at least. The second part of the database, uh, the database entry, includes the annotations that our curator uh, added for a, a specific protein. So as you have seen, we can find structural information about the disordered state of a region. This region, the N-terminal region, was, was determined by NMR spectroscopy. And you can also find uh, um, information about uh, the functions if they have been annotated. So uh, in this case, we have two regions uh, that are involved uh, in protein binding. And uh, this is the, the main features you can find uh, in a, in a disprot uh, homepage, in a disprot entry. But uh, what can you do also with uh, the other pages of uh, uh, the database in order to be able to explore it? So we have other relevant pages, which are the release notes, uh, 
did download the help about bioperation and ontology. We are not going to explore all of them today. Some of these will be explored in detail with a Dean webinar that will take place next week. So we have uh, the release notes. Uh, in the release notes, you will be able to find uh, this table. Uh, which is the amino acid composition of the disparate regions, so uh, which uh, are the most abundant uh, uh, residues uh, inside the intrinsically disordered regions annotated in this group. Uh, you will see the amino acid, the residues, the number of residues uh, uh, for uh, isoleucine, valine, and the frequency. But you will be also able to explore the number of annotations for each uh, ontology term in this plot. So for the function, the structural states, and structural transition. And also for uh, uh, the taxonomic classification of this plot, we use the NCBI taxonomy uh, service. And we have uh, uh, organisms from uh, uh, eukaryota, bacteria, archaea. We also have viruses, as you have seen before. So you will be able to see how many proteins for each one and how many regions that are annotated. Of course, you can also expand them uh, and find uh, more detailed information. The same way we can do with the annotation uh, for uh, the structural state, for example, the function and uh, the transitions. Then we uh, use Apicurum, a uh, third party service, to track the uh, annotations of uh, our curators uh, and uh, the uh, number of contributions that have been uh, produced uh, in this product by our curators. And uh, uh, finally, the most relevant information, maybe for the user, is uh, uh, the update about uh, each uh, new release, each new version of the database. So as I said before, we had a release in June. The next one will take place in December. And uh, you can see here the, um, the updates about this release. Uh, this was an annotation release, not a technical release. Uh, and we introduced two new datasets, the cancer-related proteins and the autophagy-related proteins. Uh, for each one of them, you will be able to see how many new proteins uh, and how many revised proteins. It means how many proteins that were already existing in the database, but have been updated and uh, uh, carefully checked in order to add new information. You will also be able to see in total how many new publications we added with that release to the database and how many proteins uh, already exist in the database we have revised by adding new uh, information. And uh, during uh, uh, that release, we also added uh, the alpha for the predictions to the feature viewer. Um, you can find additional information about the database, uh, both about the graphical user interface and the API in the help page. So you will find uh, uh, info about uh, the uh, browse page how it's structured, it's table, the sidebar, the search box. So all uh, the, um, uh, the things you can use to look for uh, information in the database and for uh, your protein of interest and, uh, um, if, and also the details about uh, um, each entry page. As we have seen before, a top panel uh, with all the uh, detail about uh, uh, the sequence length, the organism, and uh, cross-references to other databases, the feature viewer, and the list of manually annotated regions. And then uh, you will also uh, be redirected to uh, the dedicated uh, API documentation page of this product, which is this. So here you can uh, look for uh, the uh, RESTful endpoints for the programmatic access uh, that you can use to retrieve a single entry region uh, to perform a database search. You can also get in touch uh, with uh, our developer uh, by clicking here. You will uh, send an email with uh, your request, your comments to the developer of the database. So this is about uh, the, the help page of this plot. We also have uh, an about page. In the about page, you will uh, find out how to cite the resource. So if you use this plot, we kindly ask you to uh, cite these uh, um, following references, uh, the newest one, which was published in 2022, uh, the previous update uh, in 2020 and uh, in uh, uh, 2017. 
And you can contact us for any uh, question, um, issue, or whatever you want to know by using the email that uh, we added here. You find uh, uh, also uh, the info about the license and the privacy notice and the data controller of uh, the database. Finally, this is, could be relevant both for people interested uh, in uh, um, contributing to this product uh, as uh, uh, curators, but also for experimental groups that are interested in submitting their data uh, to this product. We have a bio curation uh, page. Here we um, describe what you can do if you're interested in volunteering as a curator in this product. So you can fill out a form that is linked here to let us know about uh, your background, what you're interested in, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, to give you an idea of what uh, is uh, uh, currently ongoing uh, uh, in this part, we have uh, a list of the available projects that could uh, uh, be um, uh, of interest for a, for a researcher. So, for example, providing new annotation about viral proteins uh, or about any other data set or a specific organism. This, instead, is for uh, the um, experimental groups. So, if you have a, a group and uh, you know that a publication from your group describing an IDP, a function associated to an IDP or an IDR is not annotated in this product yet, you can fill out the form linked here to let us know in order for our curators to be able to add your publication to the database. Again, you can get in touch with us with, uh, the, uh, with our email address, and you can follow us on Twitter to find more information about uh, uh, the events, uh, the uh, releases, uh, and the bio-creation courses uh, to be part uh, of this product. And uh, um, this is all for uh, the first webinar of this product. We are going to have a more detailed one uh, that uh, uh, we will use to discuss uh, um, more in detail the entries, how to download and perform a search in the database. Thank you.